situation in the ASEAN region uh, is not a question anymore. It's more a matter of assuring it won't have negative consequences. Our dual dialogue on this matter is going to be moderated by the Executive Vice President of the Asia Society. Um, he's a seasoned and eight-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, having been most recently Managing Editor for International Coverage at ABC News. Please welcome Tom Nagorski. Well, I'm honored to be here, but mostly to be on the stage with these two gentlemen. Uh, in terms of introductions, I think it's fair to say that there, uh, there aren't too many, not just seasoned, but as distinguished uh, uh, diplomats and public servants the United States has uh, than John Negroponte, and certainly uh, very few uh, business people as successful and as distinguished as Enrique Razon. As co-chair of the U.S. Philippine Society, uh, delighted to be part of uh, this effort to make people aware of the uh, investment and trade and business opportunities in the Philippines. It was 1967, some uh, 49 years ago, when the formation of uh, ASEAN was announced. Initially, uh, I think it was created uh, in reaction to what was happening in Southeast Asia at the time, namely the war in Vietnam and the struggle against uh, uh, communist threats, and it started as a somewhat amorphous uh, organization without uh, that much structure to it, and it was interesting to see it evolve over time. Today, fast forward, uh, it, ASEAN has evolved really into a, a, a much stronger political organization. The ASEAN group is dealt with seriously and taken seriously by the entire globe. There's ASEAN dialogues at the various levels, including uh, uh, the head of government levels. Uh, most notably, uh, President uh, Obama just mm -hmm. hosted the ASEAN leadership uh, in uh, Palm Springs, California, mm -hmm. just a f uh, literally a few days ago, which is a, a, an, an example of the incredible seriousness uh, with which uh, the United States uh, takes uh, the ASEAN group of countries. So we're talking about a market of 500 million people. We're talking about a group of countries that are strategically situated uh, in the East Asia Pacific uh, region. So uh, uh, it's been fascinating to watch ASEAN evolve over the years. I think within ASEAN, uh, integration is moving forward, although slowly. Uh, we have some issues on our own in the Philippines. But as far as the border of ASEAN itself, this is where I have the, uh, the issue. Mm -hmm. Singapore has uh, probably at least 20 free trade agreements with countries all over the world. The Philippines, we have only one with uh, Japan. Um, so Singapore has, we don't have common tariffs towards the rest of the world. So countries like Singapore could be used as a back door into ASEAN to get preferential mm -hmm. treatment as far as tariffs are concerned. Um, so I, I think that the, as we were discussing earlier, the board, the customs uh, unification of ASEAN has to be addressed before full integration can happen. Uh, so what TPP. Philippines has to focus on is becoming qualified to join such a thing as TPP. Mm -hmm. And that's a legal restructuring of our <coughs> laws, and mostly laws, not real regulation. When, and they're not even laws, it's constitutional issues on limits on foreign ownership, et cetera. So uh, the work should be started to be a, at least to qualify for such an organization. Whether we join or not is a different issue, but. Everybody says it's great to join and this and that, but we're not, we're not even qualified to. So let's get our house in order first, then make the decision on what organizations we should, we should join. ASEAN has to solve these other issues as well. That ASEAN is not a solid block like the EU. Right. Um, everybody has their own regulations, their own laws, different, some countries are structured differently. I think the trend of, uh, of history, of economic history, is moving in the direction. It's not a question of if, mm. it's a question of, of when, in my opinion. And I think eventually it'll come to pass, but each country is gonna have to find their own way to do that. The Asia Pacific region has become the demographic and economic epicenter of mm -hmm. the world, and it behooves any country, any group of countries like the United States or the European Union to think very carefully and very hard about how they're going to engage with the Asia Pacific region. 
And as a subset of that, it seems to me, one very important element is going to be how do we engage with ASEAN. And right. I think it behooves us to uh, think of ASEAN as a group of countries of which one important member is uh, the Philippines. When you think about regime change, the Philippines is an outstanding and one of the few, if not the only example, of a peaceful, successful regime change in a country in, in our lifetimes or in our recent uh, history compared to all the messes that have been created by the toppling of governments in the Middle East and so forth. So both be thankful for it, but I would say be proud of your political system. It's a great success story. Thank you.